with you. And with you, sir. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our celebration of the fourth Sunday in Advent. In response to David's desire to build a temple, God reveals his plan to establish a house, an everlasting kingdom. The Most High will make his dwelling in Mary, the new temple. The child to be born will be holy, the Son of God. Standing in God's holy presence, we ask for mercy. Lord Jesus, you lead us in the path of God's will. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you proclaim the good news. Christ, have mercy. Shall 
will stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to, who, to him who can strengthen you, according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret for the long ages, but now manifested through the prophetic writings and according to the command of the eternal God, made known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ. Be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to
Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. all agree that we as Catholic Christians are called to a mission. Each one of us is called to a mission, especially during these days of Advent. And for three weeks now, we've been getting ready, we've been praying, we've been preparing, because as we learned in the first week, that we do not know the day nor the hour when the Lord will come. So we have this holy season of Advent that gives us the four Sundays close to four weeks to be ready, to be watching. Two weeks ago on the second Sunday of Advent, we heard from John the Baptist saying, prepare the way of the Lord. And then last week we heard again from John the Baptist saying, make straight the path to the Lord. And then today he's referred to in the mother, in the room of his mother, Elizabeth. Today's gospel, the angel Gabriel appearing, we know that gospel, we've heard it. As a matter of fact, we heard it under two weeks ago. That is the standard, that is the regular gospel on the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. And as we've discussed many times, the church Sunday readings, the gospel in particular, are on a three-week excuse me, a three-year cycle. So this year it happens to be Luke's turn to read on the fourth Sunday of Advent, and it's the same gospel we heard. And on the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, we looked at that reading from the perspective of Mary, because it was her feast. Today we look at it with the perspective of the fourth Sunday of Advent. It's about the coming of the Messiah, the Son of the Most High, the Son of God, the Chosen One, Jesus, the Prince of Peace, His birthday is coming, as we well know. God calls each of us, from Mary and David and John the Baptist, to a mission, a mission that only each one of us are called to specifically, individually. But so were the prophets and the psalmists called to mission. So was Joseph and Paul and the Twelve and the other writers of the New Testament, the Old Testament. 
the martyrs, the saints. And you and I are each called to a mission that only you and I can accomplish. We are called to do something, maybe something more. Maybe five years ago, five days ago, five weeks ago, we were called to do something, and we made that decision, yes or no. But now we can be called to something else. Many of you know that I'm a second career priest, and for years, for 30 some odd years, God was calling me. And I kept saying, not now. But God is persistent. Or God would say, okay, well then, do this. And maybe I did that. But God will constantly be asking us and inviting us into the mission to help build up the kingdom of God here on earth. That call is only something you or I will be able to do. First of all, we need to be open to God's invitation. We're open to God's invitation. Then we need to be able to ponder, to pray, and to pause. And then we can make the decision, yes or no. Or maybe not yet. God will continue to call us into that deeper relationship and asking us to help us in some way, shape, or form that you would be able to do, but I wouldn't. Or I'm able to do, and you wouldn't. To ponder means to think about something. To think about something very carefully, especially before making a decision or reaching a conclusion. A conclusion about what God wants each one of us to do today, or this week, or this Advent, or the end of December 2020. God invites each one of us. But when, when making that decision, after pondering and praying and pausing, keep in mind the words that Gabriel said to Mary in the Gospel today. Nothing will be impossible for God. Nothing. Sometimes it's also helpful, I think, to remember all the great things God has done for each one of us. Similar to how King David in that first reading was reminded by the prophet Nathan of all the great things God had done for him and for the people of Israel. And that wherever David went, God was with him. And we know that. We know that God is with us always. So as Advent is drawing to a close this week and the calendar turns towards Christmas, our anticipation builds. Certainly children, their anticipation are wondering what will be under the tree on Christmas. But think about the excitement the Jewish people felt 2,000 years ago. John the Baptist has been pro proclaiming a, a baptism of, of repentance because the Lord is near. Prepare the way, make straight the path. So there was an excitement among the Jewish people saying, could this really be? Could the Messiah finally be coming? They waited thousands of years for that moment. We don't have that same longing we have an excitement that there is something special about this particular holy day coming up. Christmas 2020. We yearn for the coming of Jesus in our lives, the coming of God, so that we can draw closer to our Heavenly Father. Jesus offers us many things, some of which include peace, justice, security, Charity, light in the darkness of our world, truth, reconciliation, and the list goes on and on. God calls us to mission in Jesus Christ every day. And Jesus invites us to love God and to love neighbor. We no longer have to wait for the coming of the Lord. We know Jesus is present among us. We commemorate his birthday on December 25th, but we can celebrate his presence every day here 
in the Eucharist, where the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, comes down and the priest says, change this water and wine, into the, excuse me, the wine, wine and the bread, into the body and blood of Jesus Christ, and that we can receive during Holy Communion. We no longer have to wait because Jesus is with us. Because we do what Jesus said on the Last Supper. Do this in memory of me. We can receive and honor and respect and adore Jesus in our lives whenever we have the opportunity to receive Holy Communion. And during this pandemic, perhaps we stay at home and we watch online, either here or some other church or some other mass. We can pray that spiritual communion prayer and we also pray that one day we can all be back together so that the longing for the Eucharist that we experience, the longing for Christmas, the longing for Christ, can be celebrated once again in community, either in here at Sacred Heart and Carol, or Lady of Knox Shrine in East Durham, St. John the Baptist in Greenville, or some other church. We can once again pray together in person, receive body and blood of Jesus in Holy Communion. We are aware of his incarnation and his presence this day of Advent, but every day throughout the year. And we are invited to a mission that only each one of us can do. We need to pause, to ponder, to pray, and then make the decision. Mary chose to say yes. What would have happened if she said no? We don't know. Because Mary said yes. And God wants us to say yes to Jesus. Today and every day. Keeping in mind that God is always present among us. Inviting us into that mission. Into a closer and deeper relationship with our Heavenly Father. So the question today and the question this week for everyone is, how do you respond? Yes or no? say our Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father of Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died in His burial. He descended into hell, and on the third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. O God of love, you looked with favor on your servant Mary. <coughs> Look with favor on the prayers we now bring to you. For all God's people that are longing for Christ be fulfilled this Christmas, we pray to the Lord. Lord for our local and national civic leaders, that God bless and guide them in their service, we pray to the Lord. Lord for those who are lonely and depressed at this time of the year, that they find hope and loving fellowship in this community, 
we pray to the Lord. For those affected by abuse in the world, that they find healing, we pray to the Lord. For all Christians, particularly the members of this assembly, that they may proclaim the good news by word and example, we pray to the Lord. For all the names in our books of prayer petitions in our three worship sites, and for all who have died, especially Patrick Downey, Dennis Mahoney, and those who died during this pandemic. And we remember in a special way Noreen Brown, Stephen O'Shea, Brendan and Seamus Fallon, Dr. Vincent Tuzio, Richard Reynolds, and all in our one faith community, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. In joyful expectation of Christmas, we place these petitions before our merciful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We will have a second collection today on um, to help with our expenses for Christmas flowers. I ask you for your generosity if you're able. And then also for our faith formation families, our Bible reference this week is Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. Matthew 1, 21. <laughs>
May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Until he comes again, and we offer you the 
bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, Howard, our Bishop Emeritus, with all bishops, priests, deacons, religious, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead, whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Elizabeth, with St. John the Baptist, with St. Catherine of Siena, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter on my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be you. As a reminder for those here present, I will come to each of you. You do not have to move. Please keep your mask on until I get there. I will put a mask on, and I will offer you the body of Christ. Place it in your hand, and ask you to... Um, Say amen or amen, and uh, then uh, replace your mask. Thank you. If you could, please join in saying our spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
receive this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's Nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for joining us, whether here in person or online. Uh, thank you also to those of you who have signed up for Christmas Mass. All the Masses are now full or closed, um, so if you haven't registered, please uh, watch online starting at 4 p.m. on Christmas Eve uh, and then anytime on Christmas Day. Next week, uh, next Saturday, there will be a special uh, Mass at the Shrine on the 26th, the day after Christmas at 10.30 in the morning. There will be no vigil that night. Uh, for the uh, Feast of the Holy Family. There will be a Mass at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. And the Mass online, of course, at 11 a.m. as well. You must sign up if you want to come in person to either of those, uh, any of those Masses. And you need to sign up by Friday, which is Christmas Day, online, or by Wednesday the 23rd by 12 noon, if you call in. The offices will be closed starting on the 24th, all day on the 24th, 25th, and all the way through reopen on uh, January 4th. As a reminder, it's also in the bulletin, if you're leaving a message, we will be checking messages uh, throughout the, uh, the vacation time, but you need to leave your name and your number twice. Sometimes we get no name, sometimes we get half the phone number. We, try, we don't have caller ID, so please say it slowly, a little bit slow at this point, you know, uh, so we'd appreciate it. Also, volunteers for Christmas, if you haven't heard from us, you should have received an email, so I apologize if you didn't get one. Call the Sacred Heart office by tomorrow, 12 noon, and we'll uh, get you something to do. Also, uh, some, there'll be some limited hours for Christmas week and Christmas day for um, the, the, the different worship sites, so instead of trying to remember which one's open and closed, look at the bulletin. Um, there's the deadline for the Angel Memorial Tree out at the Shrine, see the detail for that. There's uh, calendars, if you'd like, um, in the back of church. And then lastly, each week, and especially on Christmas, but each week when you sign up for a Mass, we, give, we send you an email automatically that says you've registered. Okay? Yesterday and a few other times we've had people come and say, I'm not sure I'm registered. Well, if you're not sure and we don't have you, we can't let you in. Okay? So, check before you come, make sure you receive the response from us, okay? Um, whether it's a verbal one or electronically, okay? Um, we do send out the email confirmation um, a day or so in advance, uh, so check your email, okay? I think that's about it for now. Um, bow down for the blessing. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his second coming. Sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent, and enrich you with his blessing forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity forever and ever. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in mystery forever and ever. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. 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 Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. The sacred heart of Jesus. Have mercy on us. Our Lady of God. St. John the Baptist. Pray for us. I forgot to mention that those of you who are here in person, if you'd like to receive the anointing of the sick, I will be using a Q-tip with the oil on it on your forehead and on your hands. And then keep your mask on. I'll have my mask on. Please reply, Amen or Amen. And, but if you do not want to uh, receive uh, the anointing, you, you may leave as soon as the, uh, the last song is over. So thank you very much. God bless. Have a great week and watch the ice. Okay.